Alright guys, so for the software this week, we're going to go through Android Studios and learn how to make a countdown timer app. Once you got it open in your XML, what we're going to do first is we're going to change this text to, instead so of hello world, we'll change it to 10 seconds to get started. D for it so we're gonna call this countdown text so that way we can access it a little bit later on underneath of it we're gonna create a button so that way we can click on something and make some things happen we'll call the button countdown button that's a good name for it all right let's see here what else do we need to do we're gonna go ahead and set the text to say start to get it started off. We'll have it change to pause later on. Let's see how it looks. All right, this looks a little weird. Um, first, let's make that 10 seconds look a little bit bigger. Change its text size to 50 SP. And then we'll just drag this start button over, kind of align it how we want figure out so because we're using a constraint layout we can use these handles to kind of place it as we please and take your time to get it nice and right and bone apple tea so now that we got it all set up let's go look at our Java code So what we're going to need to do first is we're going to create our instance variables. Go private variable, our text view we'll call, we'll label it the same ID as we did for our, that we did earlier for the text view. And then our button we'll do the same thing, we'll go countdown button. Alright, what we're also going to need to do is we're gonna need a countdown timer. Go with that guy right there. And we'll create a long variable for the time less than milliseconds. So that way we can keep track of the time going on. And then Boolean variable true or false to see is the time running or not. Side note, boolean variable, if you do not set it to true or false right away, it will be false automatically. Alright, so we got a, our countdown text, we're going to need to connect it to what we have on the screen, so find view by id, r.id, countdown text, we're going to do the same thing with our button, so find view by id, figure out what's going on with it. We're going to link it up to that button we created a second ago in the XML. Alright, so now when we click on the button, I'm going to do dot set button dot. Alright, so set on, click listener, new, when you type in new, then view, hit tab, all this stuff will auto populate here for us pretty good stuff so we're gonna create this first method start stop we're gonna call that we'll create that here right now go public void start stop and here what's gonna happen is if time running is true then what we want to do is we want to give us the option to stop the timer. However, if time running is false, we're not doing anything else, we'll say start timer. All right, good stuff. And stop and stop timer will create right now. 
right, so public void, we'll go start timer first. It'll be a little bit longer. We got a couple more things we're gonna have to do with it. So in this method, what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna say countdown timer is equal to new countdown timer. Auto populate some stuff. And we're gonna change that to L just because that's how they used to do it in the old version. And time left in milliseconds is now gonna be that L we just created. And what we're also gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna say update timer, create a new method here in a second to update the timer. All right, so what's gonna happen after that is as soon as if it goes through, it'll go through on finish. Um, then we'll go back to start which is going to be a given method to us by Android Studio. Good people. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to say countdown button. When this is running, we're going to make the text say, instead of start, we're going to change it to pause. So that way people know, hey, if I want to pause it, click this button. And time running will be set to true for right now. So we're going to be changing that a little bit. And then for our stop timer, public void, stop timer. All right, so inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the countdown button. That's not true. So what we're gonna be doing actually is we're gonna change this countdown timer to cancel. So we're gonna stop running that timer. And then we're going to change the button from pause to start again. And that one is almost done. Then we just got to change time running back to false because it paused. Alright. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create this update timer method. And the update timer method public void update timer. What we're gonna do is when this method is called we're gonna have an integer of minutes we're gonna cast it and we're gonna say time left in milliseconds divided by six sixty thousand but actually I realized that I forgot to go up in here and change um, where is it? So our private long time left in milliseconds is gonna be, need to be adjusted a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna need to add a little bit of time right here. All right. So now we have a start time set up for us. And let's see here. So the minutes are gonna be the time left in milliseconds seconds divided by 60,000 and the seconds is, are gonna be similar we're gonna cast it as an integer again and then time left in milliseconds this time we're gonna go mod 600,000 or 60,000 divided by thousand so that's just gonna give us the remaining digits at the end of it what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want this to show up as a text so create it as a string time left text and time left we're gonna start it off with our minutes right here so however minutes we have remaining and let's see we're gonna next on top of the minutes, time left text. Got a little semicolon like the analog clocks do. Nice. And let's see. If seconds is less than 10, then we're going to want to have a zero in front of the digit. So let's go. Text plus equals zero, and then no matter what, we're gonna say time with text, add in 
those seconds. All right, that's a good update timer method for you. But we're gonna need to change that text to set text, time left text. All right, so that way people, that way whoever's using your timer app can actually see. And what we're going to do up here is we're going to add an update timer method to make sure that every time that it started that we update the timer, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. Looks like I forgot to add our variables in here for the countdown timer method. So what it's going to take is we're going to do the time lift in milliseconds and then the context is going to be a thousand. The countdown interval. So that way it takes off a second every time. And let's get it running. So let's select a good um, emulator that we want to use, preferably something that doesn't have much going on already. Let's see what we got here. Some of them that are accessing the internet have issues or trying to do something else and we're not gonna try to figure that out right now. So, zero errors, that's a good start. So, let's see here. All right, and start. Look at that, a timer begins. But one thing we notice is that if we actually turn to the side, so turn this guy on. One thing that we notice is if we turn to the side, our time just resets. It's not really that ideal, you know? You've got a timer going on, you lay your head down, take a nap or something, looking at your phone, your timer resets. You got a longer nap, but you snooze, you lose, Jane. You snooze, you lose. So, what we're going to do is we're going to fix that. So, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go Control O. What that's going to do is give us some override methods. We're going to do on save state instance. All right. So make sure that on capital S A V E. We're going to import that guy right there. And let's see here. So out state. So what we're going to try to save, what we're going to save is this long variable, the time left, and we're gonna call it time, and we're gonna save the time left in milliseconds. All right, so now again, control O on Mac. I don't really know, or here on Windows. We're gonna import the on restore instant state. So, Time left in milliseconds equals save instant state. We're calling that back. Get long. And we call it time. So we're going to, for the time instance, countdown text. We're going to set that text to the string value of time left in milliseconds. All right. And last but not least, update that timer. After you do all that, you run it. Let's see this bad boy restart. Yeah, 140 was not the time we were going for initially, but you know. Here we go. That is what it is. It is what it is. Alright, let's see this guy load. Start. Turn to the side and look at that. Our time did not stop, or our time did not reset. Bada boom, bada bing. You do that, you made yourself a countdown timer. Go crazy. Set some good naps. Um, yeah, I don't know what else you said. Nap time. Like and subscribe.